Hey everyone, thanks for coming. Um, I know it's the end of the day and everyone wants to probably go back somewhere, maybe upstairs, I don't know. Uh, the title of this talk is How to Build a Jenkins Database the Wrong Way. Um, I don't know if it is the wrong way, it's just my way. Every, all of my talks are titled How to Do Something the Wrong Way. Because um, <laughs> I just kind of do things the way that I want to. Who am I, right? Uh, Michael Barbine, I organize uh, DevOps Days DC uh, in Washington, DC. It's where, I'm, where I live in Hale. Uh, DevOpsDaysDC.org. Um, uh, senior software test engineer at FireEye. Uh, Twitter at BigNerdLulz. Uh, barbine.michael at Gmail and GitHub at uh, mbarbine. And you'll find scripts and all this stuff um, that I'll post afterwards. So, why build the Jenkins DB? So, <laughs> I was working for a startup and we didn't have any money. So, <laughs> I needed a way to pretty much do everything. So, I rolled my own everything. Uh, we, needed an art, we needed an artifact repository. We needed ways to keep uh, data for all of our builds and our pipeline. We just wanted all of that information. And Jenkins, is, to me, was really kind of a pain to query and store that information. The API is very one-off to me. So I started doing some research and came up with kind of a unique way of storing that data in a relational database um, to keep track of the data and artifacts living in the API. Uh, it's user-defined in the config which projects you want to monitor, so anything specific that you want to uh, retain that data for. Um, build a dashboard out of it, a web service uh, for reporting for the pointy hairs. Um, and I'll have working versions of all that on GitHub, but it's really, this is just for, what, the, what this is is just for uh, saving that data. It's not a open source tool so, um, necessarily. Uh, it is open source, but you know. If you don't have an artifact repo like Artifactor, you could use this to roll your own because you could save, you know, keep track of all those artifacts that are being produced because it's all represented through the RESTful API and, you know, download them, store them on a file server and all of those things. So uh, the database service works outside of Jenkins completely out of the box. So if you were to stand up a Jenkins service right now, um, I could just point to the IP or DNS and it would just start collecting the data and storing it. Um, for me, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and I'll show you how I do that. So uh, the customized fields can be advertised if you want to use Groovy scripts or something else, but just at, just kind of high level, I'll keep this up because I only have a few minutes. Um, you know, I'll just show you like typically what would you would find in a project that you just kind of stood up. So you'll find a couple of different things like pass, you know, you'll get pass fails, right? You will, and you can correlate all this with the code analysis tool. You can create your own build monitor. You can, it'll, it'll show you all your GitHub um, if you're checking things out or whatever S, um, SCM you're using. It'll show you your Git, your commit ID, your user, and all those things, the location of it. Um, it'll give you all of your upstream and downstream data if you have upstream and downstream jobs in Jenkins. Um, it'll show you the durations of each. And since you have the upstream and downstream job information that's represented, then you can correlate, add that together if you wanted to. It's all configurable. Uh, and I'm currently using MySQL and just you know, some shell scripts. And if you haven't checked out Capital One's Hiaya, it's pretty cool. Um, but it's kind of, it's not really for storing historical data uh, and it uses MongoDB. So I'm talking more about a relational database because I wanted the data to be able to, to uh, build you know, better reporting, better information to other data sources. So uh, relational database is what I chose for that. And this was, you know, so this is something you might see if you've stood this up and, you know, put it in pr into production, you'll have the data to be able to do something like this. Um, not a very good slide, but, you know, this is just kind of a, cap a screenshot of, you know, a query of, you know, what data is just kind of out of the box that you'd see. So it has the build numbers, the project names, the date, times, durations, uh, results, things like that, results, times, and the Git IDs, so how it works. Um, basically, a uh, scheduled task like a cron executes a stored procedure, which looks at all the project's uh, table that is generated by CC XML. And I don't know um, how anybody else would do this, but when I was looking to get this information and I was on the Jenkins blogs, the developer blogs, they were like, oh, this is impossible. You cannot create a relational database <laughs> with Jenkins just by design. I was like, okay, well, don't tell an engineer how to, that you, they can't do something because they will. Uh, <laughs> 
And so I found this cc.xml uh, page in Jenkins. It's like not even part of the API, or but it is. It's weird. And this ta um, so by querying that, uh, it just shows you all the. I'll show you a screenshot of it. Let me skip this for a second. This is what it looks like, cc.xml. It's just this weird thing living inside of Jenkins, and it shows you the projects, the name, the build label, which is the build number, the last build time, the status of it, the last status of the build, what fail success, and the current activity. So if it's not running, it's sleeping. Um, so, <laughs> so I just take that, I curl that, and I you know, parse it out and put it into a project table, right? So now I know the last build number, and I have a column for like uh, the the build before that that before that I before I parsed it um, and curled it out. So I have like, let's say the last build was eight and the current build is ten. Then I know to curl nine and ten of that uh, specific project, and then I'll pull those documents out, parse them, and then throw them into a job table. Uh, so all that's configurable. You can choose which products you want to monitor based off of that. Uh, API call. Uh, the, the, tab the job table contains all the build data. The artifacts table contains all the uh, data for the artifacts. And the projects is basically a local copy of CC XML, um, which is uh, you know, your Jenkins server slash, like literally slash cc.xml. Like it's only in XML. It's not in JSON or Python or anything like that. So <laughs> it shows you everything that's happening. It's your build monitor, really. It's like what your Tinder box would look like or anything like that. Uh, it's, like I said, last job, build label ID. That's the URL. It's on your server. When you, whenever you stand up Jenkins, that's the URL. Um, it's there. It's always there. Uh, and shows the build results for every project. So I'm using that. That's pretty much my index for everything. Pretty cool, right? This is awesome uh, to find this because, <laughs> you know, uh, especially when someone told me it was impossible to get, like, get this information, I was like, okay, well, that's not fun. I really need this. Um, so you're going to slurp that up and uh, insert it in table projects. Like I said, last build label 10, previous build label 8. And we're going to process that. We're just going to you know, use that as a, a way of creating a work queue. right? So, and that's pretty much what it looks like is your table. Uh, it's the exact same thing, only I'm also keeping the previous. So when I, when I, when I call the uh, CCX model first, I capture what's there. Then I work through that queue. Um, now, but I also save what I did before my next call to it. So, you know, uh, you got to keep track of that. So, you know, like last time I processed the most current build, okay, now there's two more builds that were run. Okay, well, I'm going to run those two now because I have to keep track of all that stuff. All right. So, is that file like every time someone puts out a build, it'll delete the file? So, you can, you can figure it by, a, by an interval. So, if I want to run it every five minutes, like maybe you run a lot of builds all the time. So, and maybe you've run uh, 10 builds in that five minutes, it's going to say, okay, well, um, the last time I ran this, last time I processed anything from Jenkins, it was uh, build 10, and now it's at build 19. So, I want to process starting at 11 and work my way up through the API URLs to the most current, and then save that uh, last build in the table um, so that you know where you left off. Um, of course, there, there, there are some considerations like don't like, uh, re reset your build counts um, would be a, one problem. But it's OK, because I'm, you know, we're saving uh, UIDs, uh, creating my own on that. But it's fine. Uh, the complete database, web service, scripts, reports, and dashboard can be found in my GitHub repo. I'll post that later today. All right, and that's pretty much it. Um, any questions? I have three minutes left, so. <laughs> I didn't know how to like, calculate my 10 minute talk, so, you know. I pretty much skipped a little bit of stuff, so. Yeah, that's it. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, like email me, tweet me, but it's a fully functional relational database. Um, you can pretty much do whatever you want with it, but it is a source just to kind of do some other stuff. That's our sponsor. And so, thanks. <laughs>